Happy Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. We are loaded for bear here on the Steve Day Show. That would be me, Todd Erzin, and Aaron McIntyre live and on demand here on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. Let us know what you think about what we think via the SteveDace.com inbox. Email us, steve at stevedace.com. That's D-E-A-C-E. Like us on Facebook, where you still every now and then are going to see hashtag Facebook approved takes. You can also follow me on Twitter at Steve Day Show and then look for me as well on MeWe, Parlor, Gab, and Getter. Just look for Steve Dace there and get takes that have no big tech censorship whatsoever. Same if you get clips over at rumble.com slash Steve Day Show. There won't be any big tech censorship there either. So make sure you get clips from there, not the other place, at rumble.com slash Steve Day Show. Make sure if you've not done so before, Try Built Bar right now because the number two flavor in my power ratings, and you know I take these very seriously, the number two Built Bar flavor in my power ratings, Coconut Brownie Chunk, is back. Great time to give Built Bar a shot or to go back and give it another one if you've tried it before. Just go to Built.com, B-U-I-L-T, use my last name, Dace, as your promo code to get 15% off the absolute best protein bar of all time, and it's it's just not even close. You won't even believe it's a protein bar loaded with flavor, all covered in real chocolate, every single flavor. They've got all kinds of them, folks, but not loaded with carbs and sugars and calories. Built.com and use the promo code DACE to get 15% off today for Built Bar at Built.com. All right, I mentioned we are jam-packed on the program today. Coming up next hour, it is our Monday Town Hall, Ask Me Anything. At the bottom of this hour, now at 2 PGA. Apparently, the answer is, sadly, in the affirmative fired over vaccine mandates. We'll talk to a PGA Tour broadcaster who now is launching legal action against the PGA over uh, this, we would call it, undeserved, unjustified, wicked and evil dismissal. We'll get to that here at the bottom of the hour. But before we get to all of that, here is Aaron's rundown of what happened while we were away. What happened while we were away brought to you by the Democrats. Let's check in on White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, who tweeted this last night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. For anyone who needs to hear it, Kamala Harris is not only a vital partner to the president, but a bold leader who has taken on key important challenges facing the country, from voting rights to addressing root causes of migration to expanding broadband, end quote. Okay, here's the reality. Democrats are in deep trouble. The latest ABC News Washington Post poll finds Joe Biden with an approval rating underwater by 12 points. That same poll, again, this is from ABC News and the Washington Post, has the 2022 generic congressional ballot with a plus 10 Republican lead. In addition, the generic congressional ballot of eight competitive states, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, New Hampshire, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, finds Republicans with a 23-point advantage. Again, that's the generic congressional ballot. Those numbers are historic. And now we come to the part of the montage that's called And Yet. And yet, the Biden White House thinks what ails the country and its economy is that not enough five-year-olds have been injected with an experimental substance. Here's Biden advisor Brian Deese. We have to finish the job on COVID. We know that the more that people feel comfortable getting out into the economy, going to movies rather than buying a television at home, working in the workplace, the more we can return a sense of normalcy to our economy. Getting those shots out for 5 to 11-year-olds is going to provide a lot of comfort to American families. Here's Biden's nominee for currency comptroller, Saul Amarova. Imagine what would it be like if instead of being just a public option for deposit uh, banking, this would be actually the full transition. In other words, there will be no more private uh, bank deposit accounts and all of the deposit accounts will be held directly at the Fed. And there are very interesting implications uh, from that thought experiment, for example, with uh, the much more uh, direct and proactive tools of monetary policy like helicopter money, which is uh, you know, considered radical primarily because uh, economists really do not know how to manage the issue of what will happen in the inflationary environment when the central bank needs to contract the supply of money. How is it 
politically feasible for the central bank to effectively take money away. Here's the aforementioned Jen Psaki on gas prices. Look, our view is that the rise in gas prices over the long term makes an even stronger case for doubling down our investment and our focus on clean energy options. Learning Chinese today, today's phrase is the modern Democrat Party is not a political party and it never was. The modern Democrat Party is a cult and it always will be. Former Trump advisor Steve Bannon has been indicted and taken into custody over two counts of contempt of Congress. Bannon was charged after he failed to appear for a deposition and another count for failing to produce documents to the House Select Committee to investigate the false flag at the Capitol on January 6th. We told you about this last week, how the FBI raided Project Veritas journalists and its founder James O'Keefe stealing their phones, computers, etc. over an unspecified probe. Last week, a federal judge ordered the FBI to stop searching and extracting Project Veritas's data. That very same day, the New York Times magically came out and published privileged communication between Project Veritas and their lawyers. Just an absolute brazen example of collusion between the FBI and the press. Well, now the ACLU of all organizations is warning of quote-unquote serious consequences of the DOJ probe of Project Veritas. That indicates how bad that thing actually is. Meanwhile, in Texas, the medical apartheid is in full swing. Someone named Harrison Hill Smith went to a monoclonal antibody clinic in Houston and asked for, you guessed it, some monoclonal antibodies. Here's what happened. So I'm not going to be able to get it today? Because mm -mm. I don't qualify? Yeah, what if qualify? I, what if I like, smoke and vape? I heard that was a... Uh... No, no, no. Okay. But if I were black and Hispanic, and then I'd be able to qualify? Okay, so I'm being <laughs> denied medical service because of my race, is that? criteria. Yeah. yeah. Checking in on Michigan, where Saginaw Township schools are closed today because of staffing shortages. Here's WJRT-TV in Flint with more. As our Mark Bouillon shows us today, it was something other than COVID-19 that forced one Saginaw County School District to close their doors today. Saginaw Township Community Schools closed for today. At first, you might be thinking COVID-19 is to blame. But a district spokesperson tells me a large number of staff members had negative reactions to the COVID-19 booster they received over the weekend. A U.S. federal appeals court has affirmed the stay on Biden's vaccine mandate for large employers via OSHA, calling it, quote unquote, staggeringly overboard. Late last week, the CDC admitted in a letter to the law firm Syrian Glimstad they have no record of an unvaccinated person spreading COVID after recovering naturally from a COVID infection. Dr. Anthony Fauci told NPR. We're starting to see waning immunity against infection and waning immunity in the beginning aspect against hospitalization. And if you look at Israel, mm -hmm. which has always been a month to a month and a half ahead of us, in the dynamics of the outbreak, in their vaccine response, and in every other element of the outbreak. They are seeing a waning of immunity, not only against infection, but against hospitalizations and to some extent death, which is starting to now involve all age groups. And finally, be prepared to have this stuck in your head for the rest of the day. This is recording artist five times August with his new song, Sad Little Man. For him and the lie is for you Sad little man But he's treated like a god As the faithless prey to a fake and a fraud Worship the man Pledge to his word One shot, two shot Now you get a third Sad little man Sad little man You better run now While you know you can Sad little man Sad little man You don't fool me 
Again, that's recording artist five times August with the song Sad Little Man. You can listen and watch the full thing on YouTube or iTunes. And that's what happened while we were away. Aaron's Montage brought to you by Home Title Lock. If you don't own home, don't worry about what I'm going to say here for the next 45 seconds or so. But if you do, beware of what is called home title theft because cyber thieves know home values right now are sky high and that makes us a target and the crime can be scary simple uh, they can go online forge your name on a quick claim deed or some other property sale form that claims that they now are the new owner of your home and then they take out loans against all of your equity sticking you with those kinds of phone calls and emails that you never ever want to see or letters in the mailbox for that matter all right so that's why you want an ally and that's who our friends at home title lock that's what they are. The instant they detect tampering, they help you to shut it down. So if you got equity in your home, guard it with your life and go to HomeTitleLock.com and register your address to see if you're already a victim. And then while you're there, enter the code RADIO for 30 free days of protection. That's the code RADIO at HomeTitleLock for 30 free days of protection. Today in the overtime, following this program, we will record it for Blaze TV subscribers. We're going to delve more into that ABC News Washington Post poll on generic congressional balloting. If you look at history, it's actually worse. Can it be worse than those numbers? Yes, and I will lay that out for you and explain that to you later today. In the overtime, if you're a Blaze TV subscriber, thank you. Uh, we will stick around after today's show and record that for you, and then you'll be able to download it later today at blazetv.com slash dace. If you're not yet a Blaze TV subscriber, though, and you want to watch that today, or you want to watch the special we have coming up on Wednesday, after weeks and months of research, the Glenn Beck program and his research team, they're delving into that sad little man, Anthony Fauci, uh, the program will include yours truly, and then I will be hosting with our very own Daniel Horowitz and Dr. Ryan Cole a dangerous Q&A of questions that Big Tech does not want us to answer. We'll be doing that later this week on Blaze TV. Get your subscription today so you are ready to go. You can watch today's overtime, and you're ready to go for that special program on Wednesday at blazetv.com slash dace. Get a discounted subscription today at blazetv.com slash dace. So there's a couple of, of, of I think, big picture things that, that need to be highlighted from Aaron's montage, but also from what is going on today, all right? So what we've had just in the last hour in the Kyle Ritten, Rittinghouse case is the judge has dismissed the possession of a dangerous firearm charge. Dismissed it. So if, if he wasn't in possession of a dangerous firearm, um, meaning there, that he wasn't maliciously wielding a weapon or in possession of one, I have absolutely no idea what the basis for any of the other charges are. Because if he's not in possession of a dangerous weapon, then he was acting purely in the context of self-defense. But you know that if you have followed this trial and the evidence and the testimony that has come out. So I want to make a big picture observation for you about what this is really about. It is not about race. That's the cover story. This is a white guy that shot and killed a couple of other white guys. This has nothing to do with race. Most of Antifa's members are actually white. What this is about is the spirit of the age is trying to stop you and I from confronting it in the streets. It wants the message sent that it owns the streets. And that... You will not be permitted self-defense. You will not be permitted to guard your property. You will not be permitted to head off its thuggish stormtroopers and Antifa and BLM. You will not be permitted this. It is, it is heads I win, tails you lose. It is a one-sided confrontation. And it alone will be in control of the streets. That's what this is about. You will not be permitted to defend yourself, your property, your way of life. It will be permitted to do, though, whatever it wants to you on a thug street level. That's what this is about. Race is the cover story. This has nothing to do with race. This has to do with setting a precedent that you and I cannot defend our way of life or our property, or even our own selves. 
That's what it's about. A couple of other big picture items I want to draw your attention to. Everything Anthony Fauci said there in that clip to NPR is true, but a lie. Because it's under the context that this is some breaking information. This has been true for months. So what you're saying is even when Anthony Fauci tells the truth, he's still lying. He is still lying. We've been, we had to stop sharing Israeli data with you because they're not as forthcoming as they used to be. That's why we use UK data now. There is nothing in that clip. Essentially, if you want to know what Anthony Fauci will be forced to stop lying about in about 90 days, just watch this show today. Nothing in there was not already known. It's just it wasn't convenient for him and politically convenient and expedient for him to acknowledge. We have seen and I have shown you the data from numerous states for well over a month now. 20, 30 percent higher of COVID deaths in numerous places fully vaccinated. I showed you the data from CDC back on October 22nd, less than a month ago, that 40 percent of the deaths in America from COVID that week were vaccinated. This is not new. Is October 22nd five minutes ago? No. What is the day today? November the 15th. It's nearly a damn month ago. Yes. None of this is new. So even when he is forthcoming, and everything he said there is true and very forthcoming, but it's still wrapped around a lie because it's been true for a long time. Here's what's also true. And I have been telling you this for months on this show. This is why we have put such an emphasis on early treatments. I want to thank Dr. Molly James at IvermectinKen.com. My, fam- my wife and I had our consult with her. Yes, we had COVID back in the spring, but who knows? With new strains, it's like the flu. So we just wanted to be sure we were armed. So we went through... We, she actually helped us with fulfillment and everything. It's going to cost us with all the scripts and everything else about 250 bucks is what it's going to cost us for both ivermectin and all the associative uh, things that she recommends as part of her of her regimen. Ivermectin Ken, C-A-N, ivermectinken.com. Actually, it'll be about 300 because we're going to pay her for the appointment too. I'd rather spend that out of pocket than enroll myself in a never-ending program of human trials, of injections and re-injections, never-ending. I've been telling you this for months. If you go down the road of these vaccines, you are, and if your job tells you you need to do this just this once, that is the just the tip of COVID stan. It was a lie in high school. It's a lie now. Breaking news in just the last 30 minutes. Prime Minister Boris Johnson now in the UK is saying you'll no longer be considered fully vaccinated under, under, under law if you have just the two shots. You'll have to now get a third. Why stop at a third? We don't know. Nobody, nobody eight months ago thought you were going to need a third shot. As recently as July and August, they were saying you weren't going to need them. We just had a vote seven weeks ago in this country with the FDA voting 16 to 2 against them. The same FDA that turned around four weeks later and voted to experiment on your kids. They weren't even comfortable with another round of boosters. And yet here we are. So if you agree to do this for your job or your way of life or to get into an event... Understand what you are signing up for. Now, you're an adult. You still may make that decision. You may do the math and the calculus and decide the juice is worth the the jab. But I'm not your mama. I'm not here to pet you or make you feel better. I'm your papa. So I'm going to tell you the truth. All right? Whether you like it or not, you're not signing up for just this once. What you're signing up to be is a subject in an ongoing human trial of injecting and re-injecting masses of people with experimental vaccine technology 
for the first time that we have no idea what the long-term consequences for are. Because until last year, or until earlier this year, we had never injected this into human beings in mass before. In fact, major corporations just began investing in this technology in 2008. The shot that has the highest efficacy, Moderna, prior to COVID, they had attempted to bring nine different mRNA vaccine technologies to market. They failed with all nine. Only one of them even was successful enough to prompt a human trial, and then it failed there. And that happened literally just weeks before COVID began last year. The largest and most successful pharmaceutical company in America prior to COVID, Merck, also enrolled in Operation Warp Speed. They could not come up with a vax and mRNA product that they were comfortable injecting into people. And it's, dude, how bad does it have to be when a company that lies about its own drug, ivermectin, Merck invented ivermectin, won a Nobel Prize for it in 2015, now wants to pretend it's dangerous to inject it or to put it into humans. So we're not talking here about an altruistic bunch. Fair? Fair. And even they're like, dude, man, we can't, we don't feel comfortable with this. So they actually ended up being the supply chain for the J&J vaccine. That's the worst of them all. So know what you're signing up for. Know what you're signing your children up for. The potential, if not likelihood, you will be injected and re-injected with this repeatedly with no end in sight. This could be the final round. I don't know. We could be having this conversation again in 90 days. We don't know that either. And neither do you. No one can tell you when you won't need it anymore. No one knows. Like you do the... you you. you you do the chemo, despite all the downsides to that, in order to force a cancer into remission. You know what a win looks like there, right? Right. What's the win here? Do you know? Nope, you don't. So you are the trial. You're the human subject. That's what you're signing up for. You may still decide it's worth it to you. And that's okay. That's your call. But know what it is. Just know what decision you're making. Finally, I want to go to this court case, and I want to read this money paragraph that Aaron cited a line out of. This is the the Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals that put now a permanent stay, as in indefinitely, until the next proceeding. It was a temporary one a few days ago. They have now confirmed it with a permanent one. They have a stay on the attempt to use OSHA to uh, impose a vaccine mandate on the pub, on the private sector via your job. Here, I want to read for you this money paragraph. We next consider the necessity of the mandate. This is the court talking. The mandate is staggeringly overbroad. You heard Aaron cite that line, right? Let me add some more color for you. Applying to two out of three private sector employees in America in workplaces as diverse as the country itself, the mandate fails to consider what is perhaps the most salient fact of all. The ongoing threat of COVID-19 is more dangerous to some employees than to other employees. All else equal, a 28-year-old trucker spending the bulk of his work workday in the solitude of his cab is simply less vulnerable to COVID-19 than a 62-year-old prison janitor. Likewise, a naturally immune unvaccinated worker is presumably at less, at less risk than an unvaccinated worker who has never had the virus. The list goes on, but one constant remains. The mandate fails almost completely to address or even respond to much of this reality and common sense. That's exactly the language you're looking for. Why? Because at this point, this fight is an audience of two. This is going to the Supreme Court. And your bodily autonomy is going to rest in the hands of two individuals. Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett. Sleep well, America. Can but I you use know, my lifeline? Can, yeah, I, can it, I phone a friend? No, because you have no right to life, apparently, either. God. Okay? That was also decided by a couple people at the U.S. Supreme Court. So what you want is you want as many of these rulings from federal courts as possible that, that don't take this thing apart on some technicality. 
but dismantle it completely and in writing. Because these two are squish a minute. There is no, they have shown so far in their first years on the bench, no consistent legal philosophy whatsoever. None. Now, we expected that from Kavanaugh. That's why I told you the day after he was nominated by Trump, he is Karl Rove in a black robe, right? Didn't I say that? Of course. Yeah, and he will suck. I told you that, and he has. Amy Coney Barrett, though, we all got blindsided by. And so far this year, she has voted with the liberal wing of the, of the, of the court about 80% of the time. Is that bad? Not, it's not good. I think we can safely, safely say that. So we want as much of this stuff in writing from, from underling courts striking this down as much as possible because you don't want to leave them any intellectual ground to stand on whatsoever. You know what I love about that ruling? It's not about standing. It's not a narrow ruling. It just, it basically, to sum that up, it said, this is really dumb. This is dumb. It's dumb because you want no explanation. You do not want to let Amy Coney Barrett pull a John Roberts and rewrite what the word state exchange means. Or what, what exactly. the word, whether the word mandate means tax or not. After the Obama attorneys testify in court under oath at the U.S. Supreme Court that the, the Obamacare mandate is not a tax, John Roberts changed it in his majority opinion to a tax over their own testimony. These two are squealers. They'll do it to you. So you want as much of this, you want as many of these rulings as possible, stripping the paint off. Take them, take, let's take the lipstick off the pig and let's call this really what it is. The most unprecedented authoritarian power grab over a segment of the people in this country's history since the, thir- the, the, the 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments were passed as a package to get rid of slavery. Gentlemen, your thoughts. You remember how gassed you were uh, about a month ago or something when we saw the montage from the various cable news shows and they were all brought to you by Pfizer? I know we can't allow cameras into the uh, Supreme Court, but do you think on their black robes it just says like a NASCAR uniform brought to you by Pfizer? I think it says that to a lot of people that work within our government in various sectors at the moment. I'm I'm not even kidding. Is there just so much money coming these folks' way that... That's the ruling. See, I, I've been mulling something over along those lines, Todd, recently. You want to know, in my mind, how you can tell when something is driven primarily by just evil, by just the pit of hell. Abortion, yeah, there's a profit motive there. There's a profit motive for uh, those who like to kill babies in, inside the womb. Think of all the corporations, though, that could make money off of a fully developed human for the rest of their life. There's more money in that than there is in abortion, uh, stipulated. Yes. But yet, and yet, that's how you know stuff is driven primarily by just evil, by whatever whatever form that is, whatever pit of hell that is. Um, that that's that's kind of a long because there's no profit motive for. I mean, Todd, I know you're you're exaggerating there, but there's really no profit motive for the Amy Coney Barretts and the Brett Kavanaugh's of the world here. It's just fickle whims of the mob. That's basically what this is, and that's, that's at its core um, evil. You know, all of this paint stripping that you're talking about, Steve, maybe I'm just so jaded now, but all of these, uh, these couple of rulings from federal courts putting a stay on the mandate, in my mind, again, It's a Monday, so maybe I need to pace myself. Maybe I'm just so jaded. In my mind, that means even more that ACB and Kavanaugh are going to nuke this thing. I hope not. You cannot be too jaded. You cannot be too nuts. You cannot be too cynical. We live in a day and age. Everything should be on the table. In a moment, we will introduce you to another senseless unnecessary, unjustified victim of COVID stand. But first, want to remind you not to become uh, a victim of that chronic pain in your body because there are well over 300 joints between uh, and down your neck all the way down to your feet, down your vertebrae, that's your back, uh, arms, hips, knees, lots of places for inflammation to seep in, especially 
as we get older. 360 of those joints, in fact. So if you're looking for an all-natural anti-inflammatory backed by 35 years of clinical research, but also from the last almost going on two years of my own daily usage as well, you're looking for an outstanding product known as Omega XL. And right now, if you want to give Omega XL a shot in order to go after the inflammation that's likely the cause of your chronic pain, you can buy one bottle and get a second one for free today when you go to OmegaXL.com slash Steve. That's OmegaXL.com slash Steve. Or you can give them a call at 800-844-4888. That's 800-844-4888. Well, whenever we see the face of Brian Festa on this show from WeThePatriotsUSA.org, it's it's bad news. And usually it's bad news for the bad guys. And, And then he's usually joined by somebody that the bad guys have decided to go after And that is the case again today. Taryn Gregson joins us. She's now a former broadcaster for the PGA Tour. We're going to let you hear her story and then maybe how we can help. Let's welcome Taryn to the show. Taryn, it's good to have you with us here on Blaze TV radio and podcast. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me, Steve. I appreciate you letting me come on and tell my story. You bet. So tell us your story, Taryn. First of all, for people that aren't golf fans, a little bit about you. And then now why you are a former broadcaster for the PGA Tour. Sure. So for the past five and a half years, I have been a broadcaster and reporter for the PGA Tour, have some uh, had some shows for them on their social media and online platforms, and um, also did field reporting and interviewed players for the past five years. Over the last 19 months, I've been working here at home in my home studio ever since um, COVID hit. So I've been working out of my home studio, occasionally traveling um, at golf tournaments when needed. Well, uh, things started to you know develop with these mandates and the policies that accompany them over the past several months. Um, I'm 22 weeks pregnant as well. And so um, you know, was seeking exemptions from their protocols for those of us that are unvaccinated mm-hmm. from the masking and the testing. I have religious uh, beliefs that those violate. And so I asked for, um, you know, exemptions from those and they were not able to accommodate me in a way that didn't have me violate those religious views that are protected under U.S. federal law of Title Seven of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, we all have this protection of religious freedom and um, against discrimination in the workplace for this. And so I was I was trying to exercise my rights for those. Um, unfortunately, they would not accommodate me in a way that didn't um, have me uh, violate my religious views. So I was hoping we were trying to work on different things. Ultimately, all of a sudden, they wouldn't let me work from home anymore. Um, So that's kind of where it came out ahead. And then on Friday, after five and a half years of um, working for them, they fired me. What was the reason they gave you for why you could not work from home any longer after for the last 19 months you could and now you cannot? Why? Sure. They told me that it was an undue hardship and that I had to come back into the office and be able to collaborate with my team, even though I had collaborated with my team. Um, All of us had been working remotely and or a hybrid scenario. I myself was was fully here at home and um, that collaboration was working just fine. Um, And, you know, it's not just me. It's several of us uh going through this at the tour and unfortunately across the nation we're we're being treated differently for a very private medical decision now this comes on the heels of anthony fauci admitting yesterday what i've told this audience for months uh that these vaccines have waning efficacy you will not be just getting them once you'll have to get them repeatedly who knows three might be enough but Maybe you might need to get 30. We don't know the answer to that because we've never injected this technology into people in real time. And so when you talk about an undue hardship or burden uh, on those of you that are unvaccinated, you can't even you, you don't even know when that burden will be relieved. We don't have a way of knowing that. Furthermore, how does a sport that had a very high profile, embarrassing moment earlier this year 
where John Rahm, one of its most well-known and successful athletes, had to had to be forced off the course in the middle of a tournament on national television that he was way ahead and about to win because even though he was fully vaccinated, he still tested positive for COVID. How do they justify that alongside these draconian measures, Taryn? Did you ask them this? That's a great question. Um, it wasn't something that was brought up, but you know that that actually happened to John Rahm once again when he was mm-hmm. getting ready to go to the Olympics this summer. They he also tested positive, and they wouldn't let him go go over. And you know, I myself have already had COVID this summer. Um, again, I'm I'm pregnant, so this is a multifaceted scenario. And I also something that I was asking about you know, to the tour itself. And I ask of many of these professional sports leagues last year, uh, you know, when we were having the riots in the streets over the summer, they all came out with these diversity and inclusion initiatives and were, were championing those. And now here we have employees who are being segregated and ostracized for a very private decision that they are making with themselves and their family and God. And so I asked them about the diversity and inclusion with this. And um, I wasn't really getting straight answers. All right, let's bring in, thank you for sharing your story, Taryn. All right, let's bring Brian Festa in here from WeThePatriotsUSA.org. And so Brian, what would organizations like yours, because you get, and I'm partially to blame, so I'm sorry, you get besieged by people that are looking for legal representation because Taryn's story is happening. One of my best buddies had this with his own wife, Right. She she was working in an ophthalmology clinic from home and they tried to impose a vaccine mandate on her. And then like, like everything short of, you know, wear a, a, you know, scrubs to come in and get your uh, to get your your, uh, your paycheck or to be tested every couple of weeks. This stuff is this is another attempt at, in, at imposing this form of medical apartheid. And so what organizations like yours are looking for, who are ideal situations and plaintiffs? that when we get them under the microscope of the court of law can help us generate an event that could provide a precedent that that provides relief for many, many, many others, right? Why take this case? Why does Taryn meet that threshold? Well, thanks again, Steve, for having me on, as always. Um, You know, Taryn's case is particularly compelling because she works for, obviously, a very high-profile employer or worked for the PGA Tour. Right. Uh, High profile employers, large employers that has the potential of creating this sort of nationwide precedent that you're referring to, especially if we get a case to a higher federal court or the Supreme Court of the United States, like our New York healthcare workers lawsuit that's currently being reviewed by Justice Sotomayor for full review to the court, which we're hoping she reviews it as she sends it uh, to the full uh, bench, which we've asked for. Uh, that case, we already have a case at the U.S. Supreme Court. That case will be precedent setting. This case also against a very large employer, and you have a very, very uh, clear case, I think, of discrimination here. So Taryn's been working, as she said, for 19 months from her home studio that they allowed her to work out of. And by the way, what Taryn didn't tell you is in this, from my understanding, is in this last quarter, she had the highest ratings that she's ever had since she's worked there. Mm -hmm. So for for them to say that working from home is an undue hardship on the company is completely ludicrous. And for them to say it after she tells them that she's pregnant, okay, is, you know, it's just beyond belief. I, I can... I don't know who their attorneys are. We're going to find out. Our legal team is going to meet them very soon. Um, I don't know where they went to law school. And this is me being nice because this is employment law 101. Okay. Somebody comes to you and tells you that they're, they're pregnant. Okay. And then they ask for medical, they ask for accommodations, which are medical in nature. Although, although it was a religious request for an accommodation, right? Because she has sincerely held religious beliefs. Taryn told me in great detail what her religious beliefs are. I am completely convinced they are sincere. They are her own beliefs. Uh, and, and she has scripture to back it up. Uh, you know, she has, you know, statements of her faith that she wrote very clearly in her religious exemption request, and they did not honor that. And there's no reason that they could have. There was no undue hardship. Okay, this is a great case. She has a high chance of success. We like to take cases against high profile, uh, and not exclusively, 
But we, when we strategize, we have limited funds to take cases against high profile entities like this and cases that, quite frankly, we have a very good chance of winning. And we feel here we have a very, very good chance of winning. And that's why we're here to appeal to your listeners who are always so generous who have helped us fund the New York Healthcare Workers lawsuit, who fully funded the lawsuit on behalf of our friend, Bill Salier, the Marine, which by the way, an update on that, he just signed the legal paperwork with our attorneys last Friday. And on the same day or evening last Friday, we uh, wired the $50,000 that we raised through your show to our attorneys. So they now have the money on, in hand and the paperwork. They're going to be filing that in a very short amount of time. We'll have an update soon once that complaint is filed. And we want to be able to do the same for Taryn. So Taryn is seeking uh, $50,000 for her legal uh, fees. And we're calling upon your listeners to once again dig deep and help her out. We the Patriots USA.org. So, folks, this is a tax deductible gift. Uh, this is an organization I have donated to on more than one occasion out of my own pocket. So, this is an opportunity to strike a blow because the PGA Tour here is attempting to fight a, a difficult one. This would be difficult on one front. But they're, 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 as you pointed out, Brian, this is a two-front war here. It's not just the religious exemption argument that they don't they want to disregard here, but it's a woman who comes to you and says, I'm pregnant. Can you make – I've already been working home from home for 19 months. Can we continue to at least make that accommodation for at least the remainder of my pregnancy? And the answer to that is still no. I mean, the, 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 one of those would be difficult to defend let alone to try to defend them both simultaneously. And so this is, see, and this is one of the things to keep in mind too with the data with the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, they're testing the unvaccinated more. So keep in mind the ratio of testing of the unvaccinated is, is demonstrably higher than the vaccinated. And we're still, seeing, we're, we're still seeing the breakthrough infection rate and the kinds of rates that even Anthony Fauci is admitting to now when it comes to hospitalizations and deaths for the vaccinated. So this is an opportunity to set a precedent here um, that can I think would help a lot of you in this audience that are emailing me about why do I have to be treated like a second class citizen at my job so if you want to enlist in that fight and it's tax deductible we the Patriots USA.org is where you can go right now to donate to this cause that's we the Patriots USA.org all right, so Taryn, if you want to add something to that, Brian, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Steve, and if I may, just to let your listeners know, because there were a lot of questions last time, uh, there isn't a specific fundraiser link just for Taryn. Uh, it's a, because if we were doing a separate fundraiser outside of our organization like that, um, it wouldn't be tax deductible in most cases. So you can make a donation to our organization, then our organization, at our discretion, we use the funds for different legal efforts and for our own expenses um, to keep this fight going against all of these tyrants, uh, whether it's government, uh, we have cases against states, uh, whether it's going I mean, this to is be basically all you guys are doing right now is COVID this stuff. Is, so even this, even this, if even if yeah. Taryn gets fully funded, this is still and somebody donates a week or two from now and the money is already fully funded for her case. That that donation is still going towards COVID against COVID stand, in other words. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want people to know that, that this goes to, I mean, this is all of our legal efforts right now are surrounding this. We hope to be able to do other things if we can win these victories, which we think we're going to. But if you want to keep informed too, because people are always asking about updates, subscribe to our email list on wethepatriotsusa.org. And also, again, I can't stress enough, Telegram, because I can't, you can't trust these mainstream mm -hmm. social media platforms t.me forward slash we the Patriots USA or just go search we the Patriots USA on Telegram. We give all of our legal updates. We give a link to this broadcast after it's available. We'll post the link to the Steve Day show. We're a big supporter of the show. And actually, Taryn uh, told me that the reason she found out about my organization was by listening to oh, your wow. show. Her she and her husband are faithful listeners. Steve. Oh, very cool. Very cool. All right. So we the Patriots USA.org. Taryn, I've got about 90 seconds what final word do you want to uh, impart here to the audience? And hey, that's very cool. You guys listen. We're honored to hear that. Thank you. Yes, my husband found out about We the Patriots, like he said, through you. And thank you for all you're doing. And 
I just want to stress to people, um, just because I, you know, have a forward facing position doesn't mean that, you know, I'm the only one that can stand strong in this. I know so many people at the tour and elsewhere that are standing up for this. And uh, no matter your situation, no matter what you're going through, my husband got laid off a, a couple of weeks ago. I'm pregnant. Um, you know, we're losing our health care during all of this. I'm not saying that for people to take pity on us. I'm just saying that, you know, if you're following your heart and what God's telling you to do, he will provide. So um, no matter what you think you are backed up against here, please stay true to your beliefs. Very well said. We the Patriots USA. Dot org again is where you can go to support this uh, lawsuit against the PGA by Taryn that I think has precedent uh, potential for a lot of you in this audience at wethepatriotsusa.org. All right, God bless you guys, uh, both you and your husband, Taryn. Uh, congratulations on the on the pregnancy. Merry Christmas to you guys. I don't care what Todd says. It's Christmas time. All right, thank you guys. All right, God bless you. Thank you. All right, thank Thanks. you, Brian. I, I just, this is so brazen. She was already working from home for 19 months. She's 22 weeks pregnant. The, see, this is why I read for, to you the paragraph from the Fifth Circuit ruling. Because there's no reason to do these things other than tyranny. It's the case in Wisconsin we had on the overtime a couple of weeks ago where the family said, we will sign anything, release you guys from any liability at all. Please, as a last dish ever, can we try to give our loved one this ivermectin? We'll even bring in our own hospital. You don't have to get your hands on it. Our own doctor. Hospital still refused. Why? Because this isn't about medicine and it's not about the law or any of those other things or concern or health. It's about power and control. Power and control. We the Patriots USA.org if you want to support a cause to that end of hopefully ending this. We the Patriots USA.org. We'll come back with hour two. It'll be time for our Monday Town Hall weekly Ask Me Anything coming your way here on Blaze TV Radio and Podcast next. Back with hour two, live and on demand here on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. Steve Dace here with Totters and Aaron McIntyre and all of you. Again, if you want to support Taryn Gregson, now former PGA Tour reporter, because she dared to ask for an exemption to their stupid and immoral COVID edicts and didn't want to not only grant her a religious exemption, but fired her despite the fact she asked for on the grounds that you know, I'm pregnant. This stuff isn't good for my baby. So that lawsuit could go a long way to winning a precedent that can help a lot of us in this audience. If you want to donate to that, it's tax deductible. We the Patriots USA.org. Again, that's we the Patriots USA.org. If you want to let us know what you think about what we think, email the program Steve at SteveDace.com. That's D-E-A-C-E for the last name. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Steve Day Show. You can also find us on MeWe Parlor, Gab, and Getter if you want to find us without big tech censorship. And if you want to watch clips of the show for free that are also without that censorship, get them over at rumble.com slash Steve Day Show. Again, rumble.com slash Steve Day Show. And again, if you're a podcast listener, thank you. Please, if you haven't done so yet, to hit subscribe or follow whatever applies to your particular podcast vehicle. Leave us a five-star review as well, please. So many of you have done those two things. You've played a big role in the continued growth of our show. Thank you to each and every one of you. Now, listen, I don't ignore my advice, all right? Some of you did, all right, about hair loss prevention. It's not too late. It's never too late to check out our friends over at Keeps, which offers the same doctor-recommended FDA-approved hair loss treatment. But the reasons they have more five-star reviews than anybody else is they give you the generic version, so you save a bunch of money, and then they give you all that convenience. It can all be done online, snap a few pics of your hair, answer a few easy questions, and a licensed physician recommends the right protocol for you. And then they offer you even more savings to get you started. Half off your first order today to keep you going or to get you going. Half off your first order today when you go to keeps.com slash grow. That's K-E-E-P-S for keeps.com slash grow. All right. It's time for our Monday Town Hall Facebook Ask Me Anything edition. 
And you guys, by now, you know the drill. I put out the call for the questions. No topic is off limits. I don't know any of these questions in advance. Todd, you select the questions. Snottier ones, if we have them, tend to go to the front of the line. You then filter the questions. You select them. And then, Aaron, you uh, blindside me with them. So should I be looking forward to it? We got good, good questions this week? Once again, it's very sobering. It's not like there is a lack of material no. to question at the moment, right? Aaron. We will begin with Linda Marshall. Steve, I assume you have been in the loop of and contributed to the research Glenn Beck has done for his COVID special to be aired this Wednesday night without revealing too much. What do you feel was the most disturbing new information they found? Well, first of all, I'm not going to spoil anything that they have been putting together for uh, quite a long time. Uh, I will tell you, uh, having read through the entire rundown of the program, I, I, it's the most impressive dot connecting of this fiasco I've seen yet. And I would, I would even include our number one best-selling book there, Fauci and Bargain, because there's some things we know now that we didn't know. Uh, when this book came out on March 26th. And and remember, this book was not written necessarily to break new ground as much as it was to uh, come up with a compilation of the ground we've already unearthed in order to help you win these arguments to get your way of life back, right? And we decided to put a chapter in there, like on the Wuhan lab, for example, because we anticipated that that story was going to have far deeper reaching tentacles than it did at the time this book was published. When this book was published, you still could not online. You'd, get, you'd still get banned on Facebook and Twitter for, for being adamant that the, the virus was a man-made phenomenon. Right? So there's, there's a lot more ability to connect the dots than we had when this book came out uh, in early spring, so almost eight months ago now. Uh, the rundown, uh, it's just very impressive uh, to the point that, you know Daniel, man, I mean, if it, I always think something's good. And then I ask Daniel, is it good? <laughs> because everybody talks about, I, this is the only guy I've met in this business that's employable, who has higher standards and is harder to please than me. And, and even Daniel, uh, as he read through the rundown of what's coming on Wednesday, uh, he was very, very impressed. So I would highly recommend if you're not yet a Blaze TV subscriber, Now's the time. It's only about 10 bucks a month. It's discounted subscription anyway. BlazeTV.com slash Dace. You do not want to miss that Wednesday. And then I'll be a part of that show, but uh, I'll be also hosting the after show, uh, an exclusive Q&A with uh, Dr. Ryan Cole, who himself has examined over 150,000 samples of COVID-19 as a pathologist. Over 150,000. Mayo-trained pathologist. He knows the virus inside and out. And, of course, uh, the aforementioned Daniel Horowitz will be joining us for that as well. And we'll try to get to the questions that Big Tech doesn't want us to answer. All right? So you don't want to miss this. So get, get your subscription today at blazetv.com slash days. I was at the uh, Iowa Informed Choice Conference uh, this weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ryan uh, Cole and Peter McCullough were cited often there. And mm-hmm. then at a... Uh, VIP event afterwards, and I was with, uh, I was speaking with Del uh, Bigtree, who will be coming up on the show in a couple of weeks. But they, they were he and other people were really asking beyond your show, where is the blaze on this? And I said, tune in on Wednesday because you're about to find out, and I think it's big time. You know, it's 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 serendipitous. You brought me the name Del Big Bigtree about uh, a week or two ago, and just totally, I haven't told you this yet, so I'll just tell you now. Independent of that, I've probably gotten a dozen emails from people saying, hey, you should get this guy on. Just totally independent of you suggesting that. So, And his, he, he put on a sermon this weekend, and his show is ours, and our show is his. I, I mean, honestly, they were like— Was it a mind meld? It was, and he's, and he's like, he, he came from uh, Hollywood. He'll tell his story. He came from Hollywood— um, he said, I used to be a progressive liberal. He says, I, I have no idea what the hell I am anymore. But he says, and you've said this how many times? He says, if we don't get this right, it doesn't really matter where I am on any other issue. Yes. If you if you lose bodily autonomy, you have lost uh, your liberty and freedom at a, on a granular level. You are not a free person. You are not. 
on, on the most fundamental of all levels, you are not. Period. End of sentence. Yes. Elizabeth Lyon asks, if you could get through to a current leader or politician and make them see what is happening to our country, who would it be and why? Who would the politician be? Yep. I'm really interested to see what your answer is on this, because I had an initial instinct of what I think the obvious kind of answer is. Um, it would be Donald Trump. That's not who you had? No, I thought it would be somebody like Biden or Pelosi, a true road to Damascus moment, like just utterly out of nowhere. Though I let me tell you why I didn't even consider that. And pick any other name; those two just. Okay, yep. Yeah, no, but a few years ago, I would have said stuff like that. Okay, and I want to be wrong. And I hope that I am. But I, I think we're in a given over to your own depraved mind. Um, you know, in fact, let me make this, let me make, let me make a biblical example of what I'm about to say. Because I don't, I don't say what I'm about to say lightly. Remember, guys. I'm the guy that did over 50 appearances on MSNBC, okay? I used to write for Business Insider. I got, I got paid to write for Politico. Are, are these our media entities? No. No. USA Today, okay? I was their token, what are their token? Me and Jonah Goldberg, guys. Me and Jonah Goldberg were their token conservative contributors on USA Today, Okay. It was just 2013. I wrote the second most read column of the year at USA Today, defending Duck Dynasty at the time. So I got into this originally. When I left WHO, one of the missions we wanted was to go into the, we, we presume these places were ignorant of a biblical worldview, but then, but ignorant means is different than opposed to it. Ignorant means you just don't know. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do, Jesus says, right? Okay? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So so that's why his arms are stretched out at the cross the first time he's here. When he comes back, there will be no such overtures of mercy. It would be with a sword in the mouth and the robe dipped in blood and tatted up with the words King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Because they now know what they do. They now know. They have been served notice. It's what Paul says at the Areopagus. For a while, God allowed you people and us as a species to live in spiritual darkness. Those times now, Paul says, are over. He has come in the form of his son, God incarnate. Ignorance is no longer, no longer permitted as an excuse under God's economy. Ignorance is no excuse. You know. God can't make it any plainer than walking among us. If you go to when Christ is arrested, he goes to three entities. To the Jewish council, they have a very specific religious argument there. At first, first it's a show trial. And Jesus is silent because he doesn't care. But when they when 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 the high priest gets to the well, let, let, you know what? Fine. Let's get rid of the politics and let's have the conversation we're all really here for. Are you the Messiah? Notice that is one of the boldest, brashest statements and proclamations Christ makes throughout the entirety of the Gospels. It's it's like the it's like it's like that room is the Mount of Olives. And he plants his foot with authority. You will see, you will see, you will see, he proclaims, the Son of Man descending on the clouds of heaven, quoting the prophet Daniel. Now, when he goes to Pontius Pilate, a lot of that clarity is gone. Pilate is not after any form of clarity. He's after resolution. Jesus attempts to direct him into a conversation of truth. My kingdom of, is not of this world. I could, my father could bring you legions of e- angels to free me now. I came into this world to testify to the truth. Christ attempts to steer the conversation there. 
Pilate dismisses it and says, what is truth? I don't care. And then plays the victim at his sentencing, washing his hands as if he had, this was just beyond his control. He is the procurator. He is the ruler of this kingdom as a proxy for Rome. It's under his sovereignty that this unjustified execution is occurring. He's not innocent at all. On top of the fact, he's also a sinner, which is the main reason here that we're all here for this is the real trial that's taking place. But we often, so those two scenes are depicted quite a bit in how many movies about the crucifixion, Holy Week, etc. The third scene often is forgotten. And it's when they go to the fake authority. Technically, Pilate is not supposed to be in charge. Israel has a king, Herod. Now he's kind of a half-breed as an Idiomian, meaning he's a descendant of the Idiomites. He's not really a full Jew. But they technically have a king. When they go to Herod's palace, what does Jesus say while he's there? Nothing. Nothing. Why? I think you can hermeneutically deduce that if he's the boldest and brashest in front of his people as their Messiah, when they ask him point blank, are you the one? And you see one of the mic drop moments throughout his three and a half years of ministry. When he goes before the political power of the age, he attempts to have a substantive conversation, but the poli- the the political forces don't care about that. They, they just want a resolution that would make everybody happy with the least amount of blowback. But when he goes before the place of fake power, who claims to actually have the power, silence. Because this is a clown show. This is beneath the dignity of his mission. Nothing serious is occurring here. These people aren't serious. This throne isn't serious. None of this is serious. Don't cast your pearls before swine. Nothing serious is happening here except serious debauchery and naive foolishness. These people think they are the power here. And then the day will come when they're put in the grave and they'll realize where real power comes from. I started my career and we started this show with the mission of actually taking a biblical worldview into these kinds of places. And so I went to a lot of them as often as I could. I was pretty much every bit as right wing on stuff back then as I am now. I developed a lot of relationships with people, reporters at the New York Times and the Washington Post. They'd be guests in my studio, guests in my home. Any of them call me now? Nope. Nope. Have ever gone after any of them? I I see that Nia Henderson on CNN. I can't tell you how many conversations I had with her. They were always professional and respectable. Now, every clip that we play from her on CNN, she's just lost her damn mind. They don't call me anymore, do they? No. See, in my opinion, they're Herod's palace. This isn't serious. This is a clown show. They're not worth, not worth my time and investment. They're too invested in a scam now. This is the dust kick off the sandals moment and move on. We have a limited, finite amount of time. That's why I want to go to Pilate's house. Because Trump's the one wielding the real power here. Just as Pilate had the power that the Jewish council did not have, they could not execute somebody, but Pilate could. The real power here to reach the intended audience is Trump. 
He still has the biggest platform, the biggest brand, the most loyalty. He's likely going to be the Republican nominee in a few years if we can survive that long. And he has proven to be extremely malleable. That's worth an hour of my time. And frankly, I, even though I have a different worldview than he does, from a man-to-man standpoint, I actually think more like him than I do far more than, you know, quote-unquote evangelical leader. I know what he's wired by. I don't know what a lot of evangelical leaders are wired by. Is it really theology? Is it access? Is it fame? I don't know. I know what Trump's wired by. I can relate to that. There's a constant there. And I think if, you, if, if I could win him over on a couple of points, then the rest of the right that is either afraid of offending him or getting out too far ahead of him so that then they can't come back and defend him again later, I think it just dramatically expands the Overton window. Biden and Kamala, all those people, Nancy Pelosi, that's Herod's palace. Clown show. Show all, all the external trappings of power, but in the end, they come and they go, Hobbs. They come and they go. Trump's the pilot here. And similar to a pilot, what do I need to do to win? Now, it, it's, it's, I'm not comparing morally the, the transactionalism of Donald Trump with Pontius Pilate. I'm comparing them situationally, meaning that a negotiation could take place there. I don't think anything could happen at those other places. I think they are, they are not ignorant. They are well aware of what they are doing, and they are given over to it. So I think that would be a waste of my time. You know, we've been talking about rough greens for quite a while now. It's that supplement powder that you put into your pet's food. And with that one simple act, you have likely restored the vitamins, minerals, nutrients, et cetera, that was probably stripped out of your pet's food before it ever left the factory. Why? For the same reason they do it for the people food. They want that stuff to be mass distributed and last for a long time on that shelf so that they can have that two-year or one-year uh, best of used by date. Okay. Um, and that's why we as humans take so many supplements these days. And now the pets have one too. It's called Rough Greens. My dog Cap loves it. Maybe yours won't. One way to find out though is if we give you that first 14 day jumpstart bag for free to get you started. Find out if you don't see a difference in your pet in two weeks or less when we give you that first bag for free. You just pay for the shipping, but the first bag is on us. When you go to roughgreens.com, R U F F for roughgreens.com, or call 833 Rough Dog. That's 833 Rough Dog. Now, what do you think of my answer? Oh, I, I think it's a good answer. It's still, rem- Paul, in many respects, could have been viewed in the same light. Clown, like impossible. Like, and he was like, wait, Paul, you're what side are you on now? Weren't you the dude doing it? So, uh, if, yeah, but who that, went to who went to him? If that level of who went who went to him, who went to Paul? Who went to Paul? God himself. Yeah, yeah. Who am I? Well, no, I I'm I Steve from around the I way. Mean, there was a certain yeah. amount of like. In the question was, you will be empowered to convince, at at as, as statistically probable a rate as is humanly possible. So I'll, yeah. I like your answer. It's yeah, good. I don't d- disagree d- with it. Christ looked at Saul of Tarsus and said, I'm going to have to handle this one yeah. on my own. Yeah, All I right? got gotcha. you. Yeah. So, yeah, I hear you. Next up is Jesse Anderson, who asks, what are your thoughts on the Scottsdale, Arizona school board president having a dossier on parents that he doesn't agree with to target them and intimidate them? Did you hear about that story? I have heard about that story, and I promise you it's not an isolated case or something like that. And you have to understand This has been, and I'm not saying this for effect, this has been Satan's youth ministry for decades in this country, is the schools. So let's reverse it a little bit. Suppose around the country in our seminaries of orthodoxy, a group of people decided to start showing up with a bunch of new ideas that we opposed, right? That were total anathema to what we're trying to convey to the next generation of congregants, right? We'd be out there like, who are these people? What are their motivations? You know, 
Isn't that what I do? Don't I don't what do I do? I get files on people who are there, who's really funding them, where do they really come from, right? Isn't that what Project Veritas does? And that would isn't that what Glenn Beck did to Van Jones so many years ago on Fox News, right? So what's the real motivations behind this here? Right? Mm-hmm. That's what we do. That's what the enemy's doing. It's just that he's doing it to orthodoxy because you are the enemy here. <laughs> All right? And he's going to let these things go. You have to pry them from his cold, scaly, demonic fingers. Because this is how they, they don't have a church. This is how they perpetuate themselves. This is how this worldview reaches the next generation, is it does it in the schools on you and I's dime. This is the enemy's youth ministry. So, that's just another reminder of the stakes that we are playing for here. These districts are not ignorant. Okay. Somewhere in, you know, rural Montana, Eloise, head of the school board, is going to be like, literally shocked, legitimately shocked that your kids are reading something, uh, artwork about a guy giving oral sex to another guy. That was one of the things that was out there in the last couple of weeks, yes. right? One of those cartoons or something, I believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. So I, I, I'm sure there's exceptions given bureaucratic, you know, largesse and inefficiency that you will, every now and then you'll run into an Eloise, okay, all right, or an Alfred, who's just a good old boy, head of your school board, and he also is like, oh, hell no, when he finds out. What do you think the percentage of those are compared to those who know damn well what they're doing? Five to one, 10 to one, 100 to one, 1,000 to one? Let's just say it ain't one to one, fair? Oh, more than fair. Yeah. So for most of these people, it ain't ignorance, man. It's malfeasance. They are not sheep who just got scattered and eat a shepherd. They are ravenous wolves. And we feed sheep, but we confront wolves. Now, when you confront a wolf, why do you usually have to confront a wolf with a gun out in the wild? Because can you reason with a wolf? No. No. It will likely just attack anyway, right? Yes. So you better be able to defend yourself. Correct. Okay. Now, in this format, these wolves are going to counterattack by, like, digging through your private information to see what they can expose. So be prepared for that. The enemy's not going to let you take back your school's Without a fight. And I'm not talking like, you know, Republican Democrat stuff. I'm talking this level of stuff. Because this this is a demonic stronghold that we're trying to undo here. No doubt about that. No doubt about the fact my son Noah loves Raycon wireless earbuds. That's why they've now given me two sets of these. And they both mysteriously just disappeared out of my drawer, never to return after I allowed Noah to listen to them, just to borrow them a few times, okay? Then they finally sent me a third set, and I just didn't tell them about it and kept it to myself, okay? So if you want to take advantage of their audio quality, it is amazing. Uh, It's comparable to premium brands out there, but Raycon starts off at about half the price. It also has the best noise-isolating fit of any earbuds I've ever tried, all right? Uh, And it works for music or your favorite podcast. Uh, Their batteries could give you up to eight hours of playtime on a 32-hour battery life. Built-in mics, you can take calls. You're in the middle of a workout, all right? Phone rings, you can pause that podcast and take that call right there at just the flip of a button, right? So if you want to try them for now for yourself, buyraycon.com slash Steve today. That unlocks an exclusive deal of up to 20% off your entire Raycon order. That's Ray, C-O-N, Raycon, all right? Hurry though, this offer is available only for a limited time. You don't want to miss it. Again, unlock up to 20% off your Raycon order today. When you go to buyraycon.com slash Steve, buyraycon.com slash Steve. Quick question. 
before we get to the break. Joshua Saul says, do you think Aaron Rodgers will be invited to speak at CPAC before you will? <laughs> in this case, now, I don't think there's any shot he would accept it. But in this case, they would be foolish not to ask him to do it. Okay. Particularly given the fact that CPAC has been moved to Florida. They would be foolish not to do it, don't you think? Now, I, I can't envision him doing it because remember, this was a guy that thought, you know, people that were religious were idiots. And guys, he went to Berkeley, okay? That's he why went he to would Berkeley. Do it. He would go. You think that's why he would? Yeah, he would okay. go. Okay. All right. You He's, know, there's so much ego there. So much ego there. Then again, I mean, you might be right. Hey, dude, Van Jones went to CPAC, right? Yeah. This is not nearly the, uh, the, the... Can we go to CPAC? I don't really care about going to the conference. I just want to go to Florida. Just want to go to Florida? Yeah. I hear you there. Particularly, particularly in February? Yep. We are going to take a family trip to Universal Studios this February, we've decided. We might just make it an annual getaway. Sometime in mid-February before spring break starts. Just to get a look at the sun right... At the end of winter, you know what I'm saying? Just to get a look at the sun, just to help us get across that final 30-day finish line. Like my whole mood when we when we had to go to Texas last late January for Aaron's uh, honeymoon, and we had to go to Texas for a few days. Yeah, the uh, way back was rough. I mean, but my mood though, when I got back home, I was like, okay, I saw the sun, I had shirt sleeves on, I can I can finish this, I can finish this, all right. We'll come back. More of our Facebook Ask Me Anything here in just a moment. I don't care what Todd says. The holiday season is upon us. I got proof. I had Christmas music from Sirius XM on in the car on the way here. All right. That's why if you want to get yourself or someone a gift they will appreciate for the foreseeable future, check out Tommy John. It is the best men's underwear I've ever worn. Now, I, I, they do women's underwear too, but since I'm not Lindsey Graham, I can't really give that a recommendation, so hit him up for that. But on the men's side, then again, chances are Lindsey might even know more about the men's underwear at Tommy John's if Ooh. you hear me knocking. You know, you see what Moving I on. did there. Indeed. All right, so that's why you want to check out Tommy John. They don't have customers. They have fanatics, and you can get 20% off the best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free, guaranteed, uh, moisture wicking fabric, four times the stretch of competing brands, breathable. I don't know what a lot of that means. I just know it fits really great. And it's one of the products that they gave it to me for free to try it before I started endorsing it. And I have now, now four different times gone back and spent money on this out of my own pocket. That's how much to get more of it. That's how much I love Tommy John 20% off your first order right now. Never a better time than taking advantage of it during Christmas. TommyJohn.com slash Steve. Get 20% off your order when you go to TommyJohn.com slash Steve. Get 20% off. We'll go next to uh, Todd Woodall, who asks, If this isn't the end times coming to a head in just routine history, how does this not come to full-blown violence? The left has already shown multiple times they will not relent and want complete surrender. I believe they've already decided to go to war, and we just refuse to believe them. I, I believe that it will. I've, I've said on this show numerous times, there's never been a peaceable mass transfer of, of liberty and wealth within a culture or between cultures, and there never will be. So I, I'm afraid that there will. This is... This is why I think and am so adamant that we take advantage of this moment now with things like resistance, noncompliance, civil disobedience, because these are things that can create confrontations, but peaceable ones. And they have shown they can win, whether practiced by the Christian church or Gandhi or the civil rights movement, which came out of the Christian church. That these are tactics that make people very uncomfortable, that are very confrontational, but are also nonviolent, and history has proven can be very effective if those wielding them are committed to that end, meaning they're willing to put up with the backlash and the suffering. If we don't do that now, then I am afraid 
history has shown where this will go next. I would prefer it not go there next. I mean, even with everything going on, I still enjoyed watching about eight hours of college football on Saturday. I read this morning Reese's Peanut Butter Cup is coming out with a pie for Thanksgiving. Except the pie is just a giant pie-shaped Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. And I'm like, God bless America. I love this goofy place. I do. I love this goofy place, man. I'd prefer we don't, you know, have Charlton Heston lecturing us at the end of the movie. You damn fools, you blew it up. But we're going to, if we don't use every peaceable means we have in our time to push back against this definitively, confrontationally, peaceably. Because you're right. If we don't, even if we don't, they're not going to stop. And that's, that's why they're making the example or trying to out of Kyle Rittenhouse. You will not be permitted to meet us in the streets. We will do, the streets belong to us. We're the street thugs. You don't get to go there to defend your property or your liberty or your, even yourself. You don't get to do that. I get to come off the top rope with a, with a rock against you, but you don't get to shoot me when I try. Isn't that what one of the individuals I think did to him, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, you're right. And that's my fear. I would like to avoid that. I'd, I'd like to, you know, be able to plan a, a winter trip to Universal Studios like every year. You know? I mean, I, I, would, I, I would prefer we not go there. But we are going to go there. Later, if we don't go as far peaceably as we can now. Here's an interesting question. Why does God, this is from Jeffrey Ben, why does God turn people over to a reprobate mind if we're already totally depraved? It seems to me doing that would not be necessary if total depravity is true. There's a difference between total depravity and utter depravity. Okay. Total depravity means in your earthly form, you are irredeemably broken by sin. Utter depravity means that you're without any semblance of good in you whatsoever. So in the Christian worldview, we are both born into sin, even if you are, um, even if you are not of a, of a, of a mindset that total depravity is an accurate assessment of human sin, if you are in any form of Christian orthodoxy through history, you still believe we are born into sin. I mean, this is why you, you guys baptize infants, because you're acknowledging. So, you know, total depravity comes out of a Protestant uh, thinking, although a lot of Protestant Reformation thinking came out of an Augustinian influence. That's why it was called a Reformation to reform back to what the church was once before and, and had largely gotten away from. But total depravity is not traditionally associated as a doctrine with Catholicism, right? right? Okay. But yet, why do you guys baptize infants? Why do you do that? Because of the acknowledgement that we are born into sin. sin on our life yep. aside from that yep. grace. That's why a lot of Reformed Protestant denominations who believe in total depravity, they do it for that reason as well, because it's an acknowledgement we are born into sin. So every vestige of Christian orthodoxy through history has agreed we are born into sin. We may disagree to what extent, but we all agree we are born into sin. And yet we also also agree that we are born bearing the image of God, the Imago Dei. So that's the difference between being totally depraved and utterly depraved. What Romans 1 is talking about is a culture that has gone ingrate. It's not merely rebellious. It is, as well, what's the last line? These are people who delight in creating new ways to do evil and in encouraging others to do the same. Full-on ingrate. You're not just rebellious now. You're not just a lost sheep. You're not the prodigal son who went off, had a moment, fell off the wagon, 
indulged in wine, women, and song, and then got to the bottom of the barrel and realized that was dumb. No, no. But then you think you're too far gone to be forgiven, right? That's the human condition. Mm -hmm. No, you're the guy that's like, you're like playing House of the Dead with your sin. Reload, reload, reload. Okay, that's what you're doing. That's utter, dep utterly depraved. You're in, you're, you, 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 you wouldn't got the you wouldn't you wouldn't ate the pig pods just so you can just, um, you know, level back up to go right back to the whorehouse tomorrow. That's why you did it. You're not even contemplating that this sucks. You're like, I just this is the these are the best pig pods I've ever had. I could never imagine anything better than these pig pods. That's the difference between being utterly depraved and totally depraved. An utter depravity. That's when we are given over. Does that answer the question? Absolutely. Okay. Good. Great, that is a great gr answer. That's a great question, though. Thank you. Elliot Evans has another theological type question. When is it appropriate, if ever, to question someone else's faith in Christ? What's the dividing line between a fellow believer we think is in theological error and someone who believes in an entirely different gospel? I don't know that there is a... Um, Let me stop. I, I think there's one plumb line here. When is when who who doesn't know and who doesn't want to know? Who doesn't know and who doesn't want to know? Like you may have you may have friends of yours. You know what? I'll go there. Why not? Because we have a lot of this mingling and mixing in our audience. So I, 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 I'm not going to give you an, an, an esoteric example. Let's give you an example that every, a lot of people in this audience will understand. Okay? Because we're going to have a lot of sola scriptura and a lot of LDS in this audience. Right? Yeah. Okay? If you're LDS... And you're very frustrated that your Sola Scriptura friend doesn't believe Joseph Smith was a prophet. But he is willing to discuss it with you, like, routinely. You can have, like, honest conversations about this. From your vantage point, you should not view him as irredeemably unreachable. Let's put the shoe on the other foot. If you're sola scriptura and you can't get your LDS friend to, under, to, to agree with you that several things Joseph Smith suggested violates sola scriptura. And in the end, the Bible should be supreme. One of my first best friends in politics, the guy who helped inspire Rules for Patriots, was, is, is LDS. We, we would sit at the deli having an over lunch and debate this stuff for like an hour and a half sometimes. Is the line of communication cut off? Is, is, is there no longer an, an ability to have your own thought? Is there a condition on this relationship that you have to sacrifice what you believe to maintain it? If that's the case, then... You kind of have your answer there, right? Um, beyond that, I really think it comes down to each individual situation. Because there's an, there is being deceived, and then there's being a deceiver. There's being in error, and then, there's, then there is being a heretic, right? Um, Priscilla and Aquila, who is it that they come upon um, in, the, in the book of Acts, who is just full of zealotry and fervor, but they take him aside because he's got some things wrong. You know what I'm saying? He's an error, but he's not a heretic, mm -hmm. it, meaning he's, he's motivated by a desire to, to, to bring people into, into the gospel, but he's an error. So they take him aside to show him the error of his ways. Right. And I think this is that's why it's 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 hard to find a, a hard and fast rule because you get into motivations of people. Am I intentionally trying to deceive people? Or am I just myself deceived and I don't know it or understand it or don't want to accept it? 
And I think for those, each of those situations requires a lot of access to that particular individual. Now, there are some individuals like, say, a Joel Osteen. Uh, that's a flat-out deceiver. And he has, we've got, he's been confronted in clips all the numerous times with an opportunity to even say, yes, I know the real gospel. If you're a sinner and you're not redeemed by Christ, you go to hell. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to reach the broadest audience I can. And so I have a tendency sometimes to stay away from some of those controversial doctrines because I want to, I want to bring people in to know the love of God because I think they're more likely to accept the justice of God if they understand his love first. Has he ever sent and give me an answer like that ever? Not to my knowledge. Never, never. Why? Because he's a heretic. He's a he's a deceiver. And I think that's where you got to look at individuals very, very closely. Let's do one more before after I tell you about real estate agents I trust dot com. If you want to escape somewhere from COVID, Stan, and to somewhere where you might actually be a little free still, uh, or you just have to relocate for any reason, or it might just be. Now's a good time to sell this house because of the incredible amount of value we get out of it. Whatever your motivations are, make sure when it, when you're going into the real estate market during these unprecedented times Bing. that you do so with an agent you can trust. And where would you find them? Well, the name kind of says it all. It's self-explanatory. Head to realestateagentsitrust.com. We'll help you find just about anywhere in the country an agent with a fully vetted track record of success when you go to realestateagentsitrust.com. Again, head to this website before you go into the real estate market. Go to realestateagentsitrust.com. We have time for maybe one more. This is way out of left field here. Rebecca Ritgers Miller asks, and you would know I'm asking this because you've been in the locker room before. Why do so many athletes sound monotone when interviewed, and why do they always ask them why they lost the game? Isn't the answer always because the other team was better? <laughs> yeah, or how about the question, tell me about this. That's not a question, right? So I don't know the answer to that. You know, since I didn't go to J school and wasn't classically trained and I was just a sports fan, when I worked in sports media and went in the locker room, I tried to ask questions that I thought – I always wanted to know, you know, so I would ask like very specific situation about very specific, specific moments and situations. And I think the reason you get so many of the monotone answers, because I can promise you it ain't monotone in the locker room, brother. I can promise you that. All right. Whether you're covering a college football team or junior hockey. All right. Yeah. It ain't monotone in the locker room. It's anything but in fact, cover your ears. But um, I, I think it's just because they don't trust us. And so give the most flaccid answers I can in the most flaccid way possible. Because as, um, as the great prophet beast, most beast mode once said, I'm just here. So I don't get fined. <laughs> All right. It's, it's, it's difficult to develop a rapport um, to the point that you trust someone to represent what you're going to say legitimately. And nowadays with social media, they don't need the media as a conduit anymore. Now, now it doesn't, it doesn't, talking to them or anything doesn't help your brand or anything at all. You can just do that totally independent of the media. So you don't have to pay them any mind really whatsoever. So it really is just, let me check a box. I, I can promise you folks, the amount of guys in the NFL, white or black, that agree with every damn word Aaron Rodgers said last week compared to what every anchor on ESPN is saying. 98% of them, and that might be an underest under that might be a low estimate. They just don't want to put up with it, and they don't have to anymore. They can just go right to social media and say whatever they want and just bypass us as, a, as an entity. All right, that'll do it for today's show. We are back at it again tomorrow, noon to 2 Eastern, right after Glenn Beck here on Blaze TV. Until then, John 317.